Uh, Will asks, what are your general philosophies on tuning vocals? Um, and the answer to that, of course, is it's everything from no tuning to tons of tuning. And how I guess the, the interesting line for me is, and I'll speak on this project that I'm working on right now, the interesting line is how much are you trying to correct things that are out of pitch so that they're in tune versus use tuning as a creative tool? It's almost like compressing the pitch of a vocal. You could almost think of it that way. Like when I listen to that Rosalia album, which I'm I'm still obsessed with. There's so much cool vocal production stuff on there. And not that all the ideas are brand new, but the idea of she's singing something that has no tune, it's really beautiful. And then the next line is the auto tune goes to zero on the retune yeah. speed. So fast as speed just for that moment to have that. And um, this project I'm working on right now, the artist hit me a couple of days ago. It was like the fifth song we've worked on. And she was like, can you take the whole bridge and just tune it like crazy and make it more distorted and more fucked up by the end and maybe build it to that? And using auto-tune as a tool, not just as here's the sound of the record, it has X amount of auto-tune on it, but where we want to put flourishes, what do you want it to feel like emotionally? I think people are uh, mm -hmm. expanding their, as they always are, expanding their, as we talked about before, the, the use of the tools in ways that people haven't used them before. Um, auto-tune has obviously been used in all these ways we're talking about, but when somebody says, what, what's your general philosophy for tuning vocals? I will subtly tune vocals sometimes. I'll go super ham sometimes. I will, depending on what the artist wants to do. I mean, I'm obsessed still with the Dylan Brady stuff. The, uh, 100 Gex just put out a new song last night. I hope their new album comes soon. The new Charlie XCX album. There's lots of interesting vocal stuff being done that I don't think anybody was doing 10 years ago, let alone five years ago. And now it's just part of how people are making vocal sound. What are we going to do with put in micro shift or uber mod or these things that expand the stereo spectrum, but make things blurry, but then you turn them up and tune them and they have, I don't know. Are you, what are you hearing hmm. in terms of you're, you're getting lots of songs coming through your, all of what you said. Yeah. All of the stuff, I, I, all of what you tendencies, said. Tendencies. What do you find interesting? And I have zero feelings about it. Yeah. You know, whatever it if is, it works, it, what works. it is. If it works, it works. I, and that's kind of, well, just, you know, we can talk about auto tune, but like just any tool that does, a thing you you know intensely like use it that way to a degree build to it in a bridge have a scene change you know i'm mixing this thing that's kind of like has an amy winehouse flair to it and i wanted to do a parallel distortion on a thing and you know it's a little too heavy-handed for the producer but i did this thing where i just like right. um overdrove a, a parallel distortion on uh on the lead vocal and only sent that to the delay so he was like, oh, but those effect moments that you did there, like, let's use those. It's like, all right, well, we just collaborated, right? I did this uh, whole distorted 50s thing, but instead we only use it in the bridge and certain moments of flair that happened there, right? We probably wouldn't have come to that if we didn't try it all the way and overcook it. Um, same thing with the autotune. If an artist wants to hear it that way, it might just stay. Those uh, Rosalia moments might be happenstance, right? Maybe she sung out of tune there and she couldn't get back in the studio to recut it yet. And she was like, well, what if we just try this? And it just sounded so fucking cool. Totally. And she's Who like, well, let's just leave it. it. Yeah. Who knows how it gets there. So to, to judge it for any other reason, except for it's there, um, you know, sounds like a waste of time to me. It's a fucking cool move. And however it got there, it happened. Um, I would say, you know, there's no uh, reason to, um, to overthink any of these things when you're in the room because we have these tools. No one's not heard it before. So no one's gonna be like, ew, that's not cool. It's like, no, it's fucking tight because someone decided to do it, right? And that's yeah. that's what's cool is the decision making to leave it, to use it, to take it there. Um, I think that's what's cool about it and what you're reacting to. And I think the last thing I'll say about uh, tuning, we'll, we'll call it for the day, I've done, done another great hour, um, is that tuning a vocal does two things uh, philosophically. It takes out the the i would say the humanity of the natural pitch that like if you tune something really hard it pulls out some of the human feel of what somebody's naturally going to do singing if you're actually putting auto-tune at the fastest retune speed you're not going to get the swoops in and out you're not going to get variation in pitch but what it then does is it gives you the opportunity to do way crazier shit with other aspects like the performance. You know, one of the things that tune is so great for is that a singer can just give a hundred percent effort into the performance and intensity of something. And then you can tune it after, or if you have a super tuned vocal, you can get away with more 
detuned guitars and synths that wobble and have LFOs in the pitch because something the because the tune of the vocal is so perfect. So making those adjustments. The other thing that I actually did recently, um, I've started if I'm having a super tuned vocal, but I want doubles on it, because if you just super tune one vocal and then have left and right double triple and they're super tuned, they're going to phase and get weird. Phase out. Somet sometimes it's a cool sound, but oftentimes you don't want it. So I'll actually hard tune these and pitch one down a few um, a few cents and the other one up a few cents. Yes. And then the phase isn't as intense. You know, you can obviously yes. do things like that with micro yes. shift and doubler and some of these other things. But so creative about, tools. Yes. The more you tune the more th think of it as a contrast to all the other things you're doing and there's like just unlimited potential for shit you can do thanks for watching just a reminder all of this content is free there's no secret knowledge here there's no patreon we don't read ads we don't have sponsors we're just trying to build a knowledge base all that we ask in return is that you share it with somebody thanks so much